Hello, uh, good afternoon, good evening, and uh, good morning if you're joining us from a different part of the world. My name is Sanjeev, and I'm part of Freshworks, and uh, happy to invite you and happy to host the webinar on behind the scenes of Descartes' award-winning uh, service desk. So we've done enough webinars to know that you know there are things that could go wrong. So just a little bit of housekeeping. If you can hear me, it will be great if you can just type in your name and where you're from on the chat box so that I know you can uh, listen to me. Awesome. We have Mark uh, from Northern Ireland. Hi, Mark. And uh, we have Martin joining us. And uh, we have Janani from Chennai. And we have Sandeep joining us. Awesome. So it looks like uh, my mic works fine. And we have Bob uh, joining us. Well, hi, Bob. OK, so now let's uh, get into the webinar. And uh, now that I know you guys can all listen to me, so just want to let you know that if you have any questions during the webinar, feel uh, free to put it in the Q&A section. We'll pick it up in the end. So if you get questions along the way, feel free to put them in. Now, uh, to set a bit of context on this webinar, why we decided to do this. So we worked with Descartes, uh, our uh, a fresh service customer, on one of the biggest implementation that uh, we've seen. And uh, as an acknowledgement of the implementation, we also won the SDI, uh, SDI's Best Implementation Award. And uh, shout out to SDI for acknowledging all the great work that IT teams are doing around the world. And we felt that this will be a great opportunity for us to share the learnings with uh, anyone who's changing their ITSM tool, who's doing an ITSM implementation, because there's a lot of things we took away from this implementation which we wanted to share. Now, let's go into the agenda of what we're going to be looking at for, for this webinar. So we're going to be setting a little bit of context uh, on what, what Descartes as a company does and uh, how their service test looks. And uh, Julie will walk us through all the, the entire journey from the search till the point we uh, won the award and also learnings from the webinar. And uh, as you promised, we are also going to send you an actionable checklist of an uh, ITSM implementation. So if you're just going to start one, that will be a really good checklist for you to keep an eye on. Okay, now let me introduce Julie. So uh, we have Julie from Descartes joining us. Thanks a lot for uh, doing this, Julie. So Julie is a VP of Customer Support and Client Services at Descartes, and she has over 18 years of experience uh, in this field. And I, I can kind of you know vouch for that because when I worked with her on this implementation project, I could really see a lot of that experience uh, coming into play, and she helped us get through this implementation successfully. And on the right side, yes, uh, that's my face. So uh, I worked on this uh, implementation as an implementation lead, and it was a great uh, experience for me. And of course, winning the award has been one of the best nights uh, of my life ever. OK, now let's get into uh, the actual webinar. Now, this is the time that I uh, take a step back. And uh, I like, I'll invite uh, Julie to take over uh, the webinar from here. Uh, Julie, over to you. Thanks for that compliment. That was very nice. Uh, Good morning, afternoon, evening to everybody. Um, what I wanted to do really first of all was to just give you a little bit of background about what Descartes as a company actually do to give you some context. Um, so we're a global leader in providing on-demand uh, software as a service solutions all for the logistics uh, businesses. So some examples of our solutions would include routing, scheduling, uh, track and measuring delivery resources. Also rate and audit, transportation invoices, file customs, and it goes on. And you can see from this slide here that we have many different types of clients. Uh, over on the left, we see various carriers uh, and organizations, and over on the right-hand side, again, uh, forwarders, customs, uh, retailers and also regulatory agencies as well. So it's very vast, pretty much everything within the logistics industry. Now, we've been in business for over three decades. We have over 16 and a half thousand customers across the world that use our solutions, all to improve the productivity and performance. We have a team of over 1,000 employees located across the world. Our head office is in Ontario, Canada, and we have operations that span across 36 countries altogether. Um, we operate at a run rate of more than 204 million in annual revenue. A lot of our growth is not only through new clients and continued business, but also a lot through acquisitions. And that's quite an important fact to say at this point, because it really did make a difference as to what we then selected as a solution. 
just an example here of some of our clients and some of the industry leaders around the world. Uh, again, they're all relying on mission critical logistics processes. So key word there, mission critical. So once again, when we get an issue coming through, we need to be able to be efficient and to be able to deal with it quickly because their business relies on it. So before we talk about the actual selection process and our implementation process, wanted to give some context as well as to how our support teams are organized. The real core to them are the expertise centers. Um, we strive that the first point of contact that a customer has with us to raise an issue is somebody that understands the, the issue, understands fully the product, and can help the issue immediately. So they're the core, the expertise centers. But that makes it very complex because uh, we have all across the world all dealing with all of these product, product centers. We do have a service desk as well that runs across and supports these expertise centers. Um, and they tend to, as I say, support them and deal with maybe incidents ha that haven't found the right way into an expertise center. We have supporting teams as well to second level and third level uh, with professional services teams and R&D teams and of course product as well. Um, in addition to the customer support team, the scope of our project was not only expertise centers, but it always for, was for our internal IT support. So we have a, a, an IT department that's dealing a lot with monitoring the systems, is it working, being proactive, being able to tell support if there's a potential issue. But also we have desktop support as well. Uh, and it was important that we needed to look for a solution for all. It's really uh, before, you know, it, to, to ha it, in addition to all the customer support, we, we have the in internal ones as well. And I think over to you on this, Sanjeev. Yes, uh, so Julie, what's interesting about your model to me, at least, uh, is the fact that uh, you are focused on looking for a tool that is, that is used to support both internal and external users. Now, let's get into more details uh, about the service desk. So walk us through that, Julie. Yeah, okay, so the service desk alone, we've got over 7,000 incidents that are raised per week, as I've mentioned, a lot of those may be monitoring tickets. Um, we've got these expertise centers that are, there's over 17 of them, that's growing in fact. Uh, we've got over 500 uh, agents across all of these as well. We mentioned how many customers that we've got within Descartes, but that equates to well over 100,000 users. And we're also dealing 24 seven and across 22 languages also. Um, for us, we want to make it as simple as possible for a customer. They, although we have all of these expertise centers, we don't want to complicate it with, or oh, for this product, contact this, et cetera. So we have a single email address, the service desk at Descartes.com. We have the telephone, the Mitel telephone, which now is also integrated with Fresh Service. Um, and once we went live with uh, Fresh Service, we also were able to introduce the mobile app. We have a widget that is already attached as well to many of uh, our products. So a client doesn't need to have to go to email or to callers or the portal. They can actually just raise a ticket through the widget, through the application itself. And then finally, the portal, which is something that we really push quite a lot, not only for support, but even for other parts of, of our division. So it's really a one-stop shop. So as well as the Descartes uh, website, we want to be able to have a whole support center. So in the portal, not only are they going there to be able to uh, raise um, an incident and track their incidents, they're able to see any announcements that we have, they're able to see the knowledge base as well. And as I mentioned there, we're also making it easy to have requests for uh, other services also. Once we went live, we've been measuring, of course, what the success is. And as with all support teams, we always need to understand, uh, are the clients happy with what we're doing? And through that is the through the customer satisfaction. Um, 
We had a, a customer satisfaction survey that used to go out uh, uh, with each ticket previously, but we noted that once we had fresh service, and these are the figures that we took from our second quarter of this year, we've had over uh, 1,500 responses. And you can see there it's been in the main positive responses, which was good. But if we compared the same period the year before, and this was when we were using our old system, the, re the amount of responses was very different. So it has made it a lot easier and quicker for them to be able to provide us with feedback and understanding of, uh, of, of, what's, of what's gone well. So that's up over 500,000. When we just looked after six months of Go Live, also we were able to see that our customer portal had increased by three and a half percent and we decreased as well the telephone. That's, that was always something that we were striving to do. Um, telephone takes people away from being able to resolve issues. So it was, it was very good to be able to provide them with more self-help on the portal and, uh, and for them to be able to find that they were more, uh, uh, a better option for them. And as I mentioned, the widget was also new for us. So we've also seen very early on that we were having very good uh, adoption on that. This really is a huge ongoing challenge that solved for us. We, I mentioned earlier on that the growth of Descartes is not only you know, through our, our existing clients and new clients, but through acquisition as well. And for that, you know, when we have uh, any new acquisition, the support team itself, we're in there pretty quick uh, to be able to onboard the agents, to be able to become integrated with the whole system. Since we went live back in September of last year, we've already onboarded seven new expertise centers. Um, they all had different challenges and we went live really uh, very easily. In fact, we've just as well uh, had another acquisition only of last week. Um, and so it was extremely important that we were able to just onboard these easily and also key that we were able to do it really without the help of uh, Fresh Service, although we were there to help in any case, but uh, we just really needed to be able to onboard them quickly. And, and again, that is something that we've definitely seen we've been able to do, it's, it was key. The icing on the cake, of course, is that we're now proud to say that we are the winners uh, with, with Fresh Service of the SDI Award for the best implementation in 2018. Yep. Uh, so for me, Julie, I think the fact that uh, you mentioned we were able to go live without uh, any help from us. So I think as an implementation leave, that's uh, a really proud uh, moment for me because uh, I, it speaks to the fact that the product is easy to configure and also to the fact that how dedicated as a core team that you were so that you were able to you don't have you didn't need any dependency on us you were self-sustaining in terms of configuring the help desk now uh, thanks for sharing all that information now let's get to the actual crux of the webinar right so now we know uh, as we can clearly see the the service desk of Descartes is really successful and uh, you know it's it's uh, won the award and it's, it's a lot of uh, good things now let's get to the journey of how it started. So when you started looking out for a new tool, what is the evaluation process like? So can you walk us through that journey, please? Yeah, sure. So, so really, before you even start looking at potential vendors, you really need to be very clear about what it is that you need. You may think it is, you think you know, and you may all think that you're on the same page, but it's very, very important to prepare yourself even before you start having conversations with vendors. Uh, just be very clear and have a, a clear agreement what the scope is um, and for us as well we needed to set what our milestones were when did we want to be able to do this um, what how would be our approach be as I say even before any discussions so our broad milestones were first created so we started the journey in October of 16 where we were discussing internally what really did we need to have uh, what our targets, budget targets were, who were the contenders. We then went on to having uh, vendor demos that would then enable us to have a short list, list that then in February we were able to have trials and much more proof of concept of would it work for us. That's when our decision making was uh, in the February really. 
And you can see that our end game was in September. So we wanted to have a big bang approach uh, in September. So that really left us with a, a short amount of time uh, to be able to have not a phased approach, although we did have one pilot, which I'll talk about shortly. Um, but we had a, a big bang. We had one day the clients were using one system, the next day we were using another system. It was completely seamless for, the, for our clients. They used the same email address. They uh, would um, have the new portal, of course, and that was our approach. We didn't want it make this painful at all. But it's important to set out what are your milestones, when do you need to achieve it by. Again, I mentioned as well that uh, we have unique requirements because there were really three parties, three internal clients, if you like, uh, for their solution. And we would all have our own list of requirements. So we really needed to have a, an ITSM solution that would be able to bring the features for all of us. Um, sometimes there, there are systems out there that are very centric, more towards customer support. Some are more towards the IT support. So, uh, so that's really important. When you're looking at your key requirements, um, try and categorize them and put values on each of them. Uh, what are the nice to haves? What are the must haves? Uh, for us, we identified, uh, we had several key requirements. So I mentioned scalability. We needed to be able to easily bring on more expertise centers very easily because that's always a growing business. We needed it to be flexible. We needed it to be able to automate and be able to send uh, messages out and connect with our, our other teams as well. Integration was a, a key part to be able to integrate with our internal uh, systems. So we have teams that are working with JIRA, with TFS, with our monitoring systems. And then also we have our MITEL system. So integration of all of these systems, making it one-stop shop was, was important. Of course, cost always comes into it. Well, the search ended and of course, uh, we selected um, Fresh Service. Um, and for us, of course, you know, the product is a key driver as to, as to why we would want that. Um, it gave us the multiple channels that we wanted. We were able to get the enhanced portal the MyTel integration, and as I've mentioned, the mobile app and the widget as well. All of the integrations to be able to go to the monitoring, the MyTel, some of these are still a work in progress, but we know we've got the capabilities to do this so that we've got the connections with our sales team, professional services, R&D, and it's easy to set up. The automations, as I mentioned, and the ticket performances, um, we, in our previous system, it was not always so easy to be able to extract the information that we, uh, how well we were doing. We were able to do it, of course, but it was painful. Here, what we needed to be able to have is um, a system that would be monitoring our SLAs and highlighting to us where uh, a ticket is approaching its SLA. It's flashing, it's informing us that we need to do something about it. Easy dashboards, um, mention the customer satisfaction. And more recently, the improved reporting that we have as well, the analytics uh, has made certainly our job a lot easier to be able to see where uh, areas that we need to improve are and how, and, and if, if, we're do, if we're doing really great as well and be able to provide client reports as well to them, it's made it a lot easier. Um, solutions, it's always a work in progress, so this is our knowledge base area, both internal systems and, um, and uh, external, so the external would also be available as well as part of the, uh, as part of the portal. But it's a library, it's ongoing, it's, it's, it's always uh, going to be there. Um, the other thing though that Although you're selecting a good product, what you really need to be doing is that you're also buying into a relationship. So we wanted a partner that we could work with. So initially we were dealing with our sales guys, and then we were introduced to Sanjeev, 
our, who was working very close with us. And I wanted to say, I think, Sanjeev, I don't think you ever slept because you were always available 24-7. Uh, then we're assigned to the customer relations manager. We have, still have regular contact, regular meetings with them. But all of this as well is in parallel to the support team. So, you know, with that, whenever we're uh, needing to contact uh, anybody at any point in time, the support team via the chat and email also made it useful. But I think a key thing as well for us was that when we were going through the trials and through the implementation phase, and certainly even after go live, that we just felt that um, whoever we spoke to within support or whoever it was, they always knew who Descartes was, which is very important, I think, to feel that you're an important and valued client to them. And that relationship, I think, is, um, is very important. Awesome. So uh, thanks a lot for that uh, comment, Julie. And uh, by the way, uh, people listening in, I did not ask her to say that. So, but again, uh, it's a testament mm -hmm. to the fact that uh, how, as a company, we believe in partnering with our uh, customers rather than just selling the product. For example, in this case, uh, we were bought into uh, Descartes' objective for the new service desk as much as we wanted to make fresh service success for them. So it makes sense for us to kind of understand their business objectives rather than just looking at it as a transactional relationship. I mean, it, it, it is never like, you know, they had a question with fresh servers and then we answered. It was always what do you want to achieve uh, with your new ITSM solution. I think that approach really works for us because uh, in a way it ends up uh, making both of us successful. Uh, Julie, again, I want to focus the next part of the webinar on planning for the implementation. Of course, I got involved during this phase a lot, so I kind of know how our journey went through, but it'll be great if you could throw some light on that. Yeah, sure. So, so for us, the implementation, we had to achieve uh, these three main goals. We needed to go live by September the 18th, a big bang. So we needed to also integrate our system with at least the systems that we were already integrated with. So for example, with our, um, uh, our monitoring systems, et cetera, we had to have at least as much as we had previously. And it was a bonus if we got more as well. And then the onboarding of new agents, because it would never stop that the uh, acquisitions would still keep coming. So throughout this phase, we needed to be able to make sure that that was also uh, easy to do. So they were our key uh, targets for our uh, implementation. Um, we would have been crazy, I think, to expect to just go live with a big bang without trialing it somewhere. Um, so we actually chose one of our most recent acquisitions at the time uh, that's based in Germany. Uh, so we'd already done quite a bit uh, on uh, discussing what we needed. And um, so Pixie, uh, our organization in Germany, we felt that they reflected a typical expertise center that we wanted to do. Um, and I think that's important really, is that uh, really if you're doing the pilot, use something that is typical because if you get it right at the pilot, then really when you go live, then it's just about volume and you've already trialed and tested the actual structure. So even preparing for the pilot, it started with brainstorming. And this was actually only one of the, the only face-to-face -face integration meetings that we had with Sanjeev. Um, the core and the core project team members we met in Ghent. Uh, and this is really where we started to get down to the details for the flows and, and hammer out the and hammer out what the processes should be. Up until then, everything had been over the phone. And I should add actually that even Descartes' project team, the core team, there was, uh, we were all in, located in completely different locations, in, in Canada, in the UK, in Belgium. So even for ourselves internally, this was the first time that we were all getting together to be able to really brainstorm. It always ends, and it should end, with documentation. I don't need to tell anybody that the importance of documentation, I think we all know it's important, but I really can't emphasize enough how important this really was. It's often overlooked, especially when we're very busy, but even just the process of documenting everything, often more than just flush out, oh, we didn't think of certain things there. So really making sure that you've documented it and 
it again ensures that everybody is on the same page. So flushing out the details, really important. Really, uh, what we learned from it, well, you know, it's, it, it's all about testing, trialing and testing what, what you've done. Um, you need to uh, be there. Ensure that um, don't just do this via phone or uh, via conference calls and WebExes. As much as you possibly can, be on the ground to be able to be there to witness firsthand what really is happening and what you have expected to happen so that you can gather the feedback firsthand. Uh, this is going to become the model uh, moving forward. So get, get this one right and the rest should really fall into place. Um, any failure points uh, will really prevent from the big bank, again, just document all the places as well that, uh, that you think uh, that have gone wrong so that you'll just be better prepared for the future. Oh yes, so uh, I remember the pilot meeting really well. So it was my first time to Belgium and we met in uh, Ghent, it's a beautiful city. So for that one week, I think I almost uh, became a Descartes employee because I was so involved in their process. So I stopped thinking from a fresh service standpoint and I always started thinking, okay, now this is not just about what fresh service can do, but then does it meet the objective of what these guys want to achieve? And it also helped me realize that it's not always about the product. There are so many solutions outside the product that you should also be thinking about if you're a consultant. So that meeting really helped. And like Julie said, most of the team was remote and not just fresh service. So we were from India and then uh, Julie's based out of the UK. And then we had the project managers uh, from uh, Canada. All of us met just for one week. And it's, it's uh, you know astounding to think the amount of work that we got done during that one week. Uh, Julie, so why don't you walk us through the journey from transition to the actual Big Bang data? I know this is a good one. <laughs> okay, well, um, your eyes haven't gone funny. Sorry, this has actually been blurred out a little. It just gives an example, though, of really what we use, really from the, from the pilot, capturing everything. So what are the things that we needed to do in time for go live? What are the new requirements that we'd identified and flushed out? What priority do we give them? So really throughout uh, all of the implementations and the pilot, you're really gathering a list of questions, to do uh, new requirements, and just keep on top of that and record it and share it and, uh, and keep reviewing it. Here we were in, faced with, after May, we had really only got two, three months to get ready to roll out all of this across the globe, all across North America, Canada, across Europe and over into Asia as well. So how were we going to be able to get ourselves internally ready as well when we only had a core team of around six persons and only one of those really working full time on this? So how would we approach it? So we really just needed to get ourselves very organized even on the training side. Um, from each expertise center, we uh, had identified a super user, generally it was the manager, and we held two super user training sessions, one in Toronto, one in London, where we gave them a lot of detail and took them all the way through, gave them opportunities to ask questions, and also that fleshed out some more detail for us as well there. In parallel to that, we provided online training courses so we have um, a system where all of our agents were able to go online and there was videos and handouts, frequently asked questions. We, we use Yammer quite a lot, so we would have a tip of the day. That is ongoing. We still do that. We still use that to be able to communicate and say, did you know, or uh, just trickle feed, because otherwise they're just bombarded with so much information, so find multiple ways of being able to do that. Quizzes regarding the learning that they'd had and certification, some even have those proudly up in their offices. Um, and also, it's how are you going to deal with, especially on day one when you go live and you're dealing with 500 agents and maybe all of them have got a question. <laughs> you can't, is the answer. So you have to, again, make sure that you feed all of this through into the super users. Hopefully they would be able to answer and just triage, just as you would in your support organization. 
Uh, we set up an, inter an internal support group. We didn't want them all going straight directly to Fresh Service. So we created our own internal uh, Fresh Service support team and all, all queries had to come via the super users into that. And that exists still today and uh, it, 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 de it de definitely helps. Also, um, you know, I mentioned our core team is spread over many different places. So again, we had to be organized. So we set up the weekly sync, sync up calls and this was internal and also with, with Fresh Service as well. We needed to discuss um, where were we on our list of perhaps requirements, how the implementation was going, the tasks to be done. In, a, in addition to that, if we needed to have ad hoc calls as well, we, they, they would uh, continue and separate little meetings as well regarding what was going on. Uh, and then even during the Pixie Go Live, um, we were chatting with the, with the support team, the Fresh Service support team as well uh, during that. So make sure that your communications are set up and how you're going to do all of this to be able to share the information, it's I think is also is also really important. Awesome. So I think the journey to the Big Bang has also been interesting for us and for me personally because when we walked away from that meeting uh, in May, we walked away with the responsibility of delivering our commitments to Descartes to ensure they go live. So we know that uh, we knew that you know we had to deliver uh, a few uh, things from our end, and uh, we are glad that we were able to do it. And also, like Julie said, the fact that they had an internal support group for Fresh Service reduced the load on us really well. And this is where I think uh, uh, customers can also partner with their vendors to make sure that the load is uh, even and there is no unnecessary effort from our end uh, to kind of you know support uh, the users. Because like she said, it would have been uh, very hard for us if 500 agents had to reach out to Fresh Service directly for support. Now that aside, uh, I remember this date really well, 17th September Big Bang. So this is again my chance to go back to uh, Belgium. This time it was in Lear. So in fact, on the uh, evening uh, before, we ended up on the wrong hotel and we had to like run all the way across the city. But that story is probably for a later day. So Julie, why don't you walk us through what happened uh, during the day of the launch? Yeah, okay. Yeah, there was definitely a few stories there. That's no doubt there, Sanjeev. And uh, yeah, the day that arrived and uh, we then met in our, uh, our EMEA head office uh, in Lea, in Belgium. And um, and again, I wouldn't say that all of the, not all of the Descartes core team were there. A, a part of them were, and indeed uh, with Sanjeev as well. Um, this is the day that we were flipping the switch. We needed to be there, we needed to be ready, we needed to be prepared. And, you know, we need to understand and accept, I think everybody would, would know that uh, and expect we that there could be things. So as long as I think that you're prepared to that, uh, you know, we faced issues. Fortunately, none of them were catastrophic. I think it's idealistic to expect an IT project, especially at tool implementation to go extra smooth. It did in the main go smooth, there's no doubt, but the one key is that um, there were, the, even though there were one or two uh, blips, I will just call it blips, the clients had no knowledge of that. And we were able to deal with them quickly and efficiently, even if we were actually sitting uh, in a restaurant by the end of the day and talking to Canada via the, <laughs> the laptop, et cetera, when, uh, when one or two things were going. But um, you know, I think uh, I think any issues that we face, we were dealt with quickly. Just preempt and be prepared. Think of everything that could go wrong, and assume that they will go wrong. And then, if they do go wrong, you're already you're already well along. But make sure that the support structure is around you, not only from your core team, but from the IT teams and everything, and uh, and and the, and the supporting of, of that. Oh, yes. So I remember uh, that dinner where uh, we were trying to get through our meal. I don't even remember what we had. So we were all on our phone and trying to support uh, the team uh, through their go live date in Canada. So that was actually uh, a really good experience for me personally, knowing at that scale what it meant to launch an ITSM solution. Because when you think about it, when you're replacing an ITSM tool, uh, when you're replacing an ITSM tool in an organization, it's like you're uh, removing an engine from a fast car, like a speeding car, and replacing it with a new one. In this case, it's probably a fast truck because that is the scale of this implementation. 
So when you think about that, uh, the most important thing, like Julie said, is to make sure that your customers are not affected because if it's an IT project, things will go wrong because there are so many moving parts. Now it's about how you mitigate the risk and make sure your end customers are not affected. In this case, we made sure that happened. So to sum up, I just wanted to share uh, what are the things that we learned from a Descartes uh, from this implementation. So from their side, from Descartes say the fact that they had a dedicated team to support us through the implementation made a lot of, uh, made our life a lot more easier because when you know that you have one person who's focused on this, it's easier to move fast and make sure we meet deadlines quicker. And also uh, from, from a vendor standpoint, it's important to be flexible. We cannot always say that, no, our product works this way. You have to make it work for you. You have to understand that every customer and every project is different and your product should also be flexible enough to adapt uh, to that situation. In this case, Trust Service was, so it was easy for us to make the tweaks and make sure we made it work uh, for Descartes. And also, from a personal standpoint, if you're a consultant, if you're an implementation lead uh, at an ITSM project, it's not just enough if you're a product person. You should also be an ITSM person, which means you need to be able to find solutions outside the product. Because a product can only solve for so much, and uh, it's not going to help you, uh, it's not going to take you all the way uh, through, uh, all the way through, so you need to be proficient in ITSM as well. Awesome. So when we uh, when you go on to the next slide, I'll also want to talk about why we think we won the award. Because the SDA award in itself is special because uh, it acknowledges great work done by the IT team. And because of this award, uh, me and Julie actually worked together on the presentation. So it actually enabled us to look back at our success and we were both happy at where we have come. Because for, for Julie and for Descartes, from a stats standpoint, their numbers speak for themselves. And for us, it's a way for us to document the great work that we have done. And the way that we worked from the start, like I said, it's always been a partnership. It was never a transaction, which means we were invested in Descartes' success right from day one. And that, that I think was valued at SDI. And also documenting the key metrics was important because it was evidence to talk to SDI about and say that before uh, Fresh Server, this is how life was uh, for Descartes. And after that, the numbers clearly uh, talk for themselves. So we really didn't, ha didn't have to do a lot of selling there. And also the core team remained intact beyond the implementation. So you could see that here. So we went live uh, last year and we're still collaborating over webinars. And me and Julie also did a presentation in London at SITS. So this is really a testament to the fact how this partnership is carried on. Now what this enables us to do is we can always go back to Descartes and work with them through their challenges and they know that they can still approach us. And uh, I still work with Julie on uh, small issues even though I've moved beyond the project because it's not about process. It's not about uh, making sure that you know you you finish the implementation because true implementation success only happens uh, like one or two years after the implementation. Go live date is just a milestone. So once we get there, it's also important to keep the implement keep the success going on. So let's look at uh, some questions that have come in. Yep, the first question is on: Are we going to get a link to the recording? Yes. Uh, so if you have missed it or if you want to share it uh, with your colleagues, you can. Yep. Uh, so Julie, this one's uh, probably for you. So we have a question asking, was implementation, was it a major part of your product selection criteria? Uh, sorry, was the product a major part, did you say? Uh, sorry, was implementation part of your product selection? So when you're looking for a new product, were you also considering implementation as a criteria in your selection? Oh, most definitely, most definitely. Um, you know, we had a very short term uh, time frame. And also, we, it was a good way of testing, would this be able to stand up to be able to roll out new offices? And uh, the fact that we were able to implement and implement uh, very, you know, pretty easily, and uh, that doesn't take away any of the, of the features, um, it was key. And, and it was also part, you know, to being able to, to drive to being self-sufficient. Uh, so, you know, it made it because it was intuitive and everything else, but, but absolutely, yes, yes, that was key. Okay, awesome. And I think the next uh, question is also a good follow-up. So uh, we have a question that says, uh, why, were you, why did you not look at two different products for customer support and IT, and why were you focused on picking one solution? Well, we, uh, you know, we considered doing that, but um, you know, I think it's the, at the end of the day, if you do find a solution that can, um, I wouldn't say that either of parties of us now have actually uh, had to go without. We found a solution that is serving us perfectly fine. 
so you know we uh, it's it's much easier to integrate with one another if we're all using the same system. Mm -hmm. um, that was that was really one of the core things. Did we did we discuss it? Yes, we did. We you know did discuss whether we should go down that route, but really not for too long because it was important that the customer support and IT systems are very closely together and, and to be really the same. Um, and we, we didn't need to compromise, so why would we go that way? Awesome. So I think uh, what you mentioned is key. So it's about collaboration and it's much easier because the way that uh, Descartes work, so there's going to be a lot of uh, tickets going back and forth between customer support and IT. So I think that is also one of the key reasons uh, why fresh uh, service uh, as a single tool because it is also a customer friendly tool which means you can have a fully customizable portal that's easy for customers to interface as well as uh, powerful features like change and release management which uh, id teams can use to make sure that you know they keep their uh, ships going on okay now we have one more question that comes up for julie so how did you get uh, trained uh, using fresh service was it only online or was it through sessions uh, with the fresh service representatives well, um, well, when we first, uh, when we were just trialing, and and I would say that we we probably when we were trialing, we we really went deep with our trial, I have to say, before we committed. And uh, number one, it's extremely intuitive. So so really, we played a lot first, and then we that flushed out a lot of our questions. Then we had to have the sessions really with with Sanjeev to be able to say, look. This is how we're organized and this is what we need to achieve. How do we do that? And, and it was as much of a, a I, I would say, Sanjay, probably you would agree that mm -hmm. a challenge for you as well yeah. to kind of work out how would we do this? So we would collaboratively work together as to how it, 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 would, it would work for our particular model. Um, so we were learning as we went along, but, um, but most definitely it's, it's a system and certainly for our agents, if they haven't done any training, it really doesn't matter because they can log in and they're, they're, it's, it's intuitive. But uh, from an implementation point, um, again, uh, really quite easy. You know, yes, some explanations. Yes, uh, a lot of discussions over the phone as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and one, one uh, brainstorming uh, uh, session only was required. Yep. So, uh, and, and that's a great uh, testament uh, for fresh service because, uh, like Julie said, for from an agent standpoint, it's pretty much just log in and start working. From an implementation standpoint, it's it's more of how to tweak the product into your workflow more than how to use the product itself. So, a challenge for me for me was to understand Descartes quickly uh, because uh, I was working with people who spoke the Descartes language, and I had to kind of you know understand to make sure what they were trying and what is the business objective. But I think I really enjoyed it because to me, it is about learning new things and that's something that I always enjoy. Cool, I think we have time for one more question and this one's, uh, yeah, this one's on. Who did you win the implementation award with in 2017? So that was uh, with NHS, uh, Western Sussex Hospitals uh, from the UK again. And uh, Grant Harris is also a really good advocate uh, for Fresh Service. So he, uh, he blogs for us and he also uh, speaks at events and he's done some great work uh, with self-service portals. So that's also something that uh, is for everyone to look at. Okay, we've just about run out of time. So uh, thanks a lot, Julie, for doing this. Uh, it's great to have a customer advocate on our side. And it's great to see you, uh, you know, partnering with us to share the story of how you implemented Fresh Service. So thanks a lot for that.